Y'all sure y'all glad to be here this morning? Y'all sure y'all show is quiet. Amen. I tell people all the time, you know, that, that song, Sister Joyce, reminds me of a song that is sung by 11th Hour. Uh, many of you know me and my daughter sing a lot of songs by 11th Hour, and it's entitled From Sinner to Saint. And uh, can you imagine if these walls and this floor could talk? How many messages of truth that it's heard over the years, amen? You know, uh, and that's the subject we're going to look at this morning is standing alone for the truth. Standing alone for the truth. We all know what the truth is, right? How many of you got the truth this morning? Hold it up. This is the truth of God's Word. Now, here's... The message, and here is kind of the premise of the message this morning, is many times we know what the truth is of God's Word. Now I'm going to ask you these questions before we go into this message, and you've got to be really careful how you answer. I'm not going to do any trick questions, but how many of you believe that this Word of God is all truth? Say amen. amen. I believe from Genesis to Revelation... It is all truth. The Word of God says that Scripture is given. All Scripture is given for, to us for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. If you want to know how to live a godly life after you're saved, the Word of God. This is, this is your ticket right here, amen? Now, many times we know what the truth is, but we don't do the truth. 
We don't live the truth. Amen? And, and let me tell you something. I'm not preaching something to you this morning that... Say, Brother Tony, are, are you saying that you're perfect? No. I know what the truth of God's Word says, but you know, to the best of my ability through God, through the Holy Spirit leadership, I'm going to try to live according to the Word of God, according to what the Word of God tells me. We call that obedience. How many of you, again, as children of God, many times we don't like to be obedient? It's just like your children. Amen? <laughs> they, sometimes they, and I call it drain bramage. <laughs> many times our kids and my kids, as I, as I was raising them up, they didn't want to be obedient sometimes. And I'm going to make this, again, uh, right along with the Word of God because you can take many things from the Word of God and we, we can apply it to our families, amen, and how we raise our children. You know, our Heavenly Father looks down on us. He's here with us. God is with us. And He wants us to be obedient. It's the same thing with raising our children. We want our kids to be obedient. Why do, why do we want that to happen? Because they will live longer. That's what the Word of God says. That we are to obey our parents and the Lord because if they do, they will live longer. But not only that, I believe that that's their duty as, as our children. Now, many times what happens if, we don't, if, if we're not obedient to our parents? We get in trouble, do we not? Now, I'm going I'm to say this. Parents today and parents of long ago, it's not the same anymore, amen? Does that make it right? Boy, y'all sure are quiet. Now, I understand I don't have, grand, I don't have grandkids yet. Say, but Tony, you'll change your mind. I've heard that. But let me tell you something. I'm going to discipline my grandchildren, or try to, the way I discipline my kids. You know what? It made them out of pretty good kids. Let me tell you something. This is not even my message. The reason why our children are spoiled rotten today is because of inconsistency. Now, I'm not going to preach on the family today because we're inconsistent. But it has to do with being obedient to your parents and also being obedient to the Word of God and God. What happens when you are a child and you're disobedient to your kids or to your parents? You're going to be chastised. You're going to be whooped. Y'all get that? We're all on the same page, right? Guess what? When you're disobedient to God and you're doing things that you know is against God's Word, how many of us, <laughs> how many of us have ever, ever done that? Guess what? There's a whooping day. There's a chastisement day. And we wonder why things happen to us in our life if we are a child of God many times. We say, well, I'm being disobedient, and I know I'm being disobedient, but I'm not going to do anything to change it. I'm going to continue to be, to be disobedient against God and God's Word. And guess what? There is a whooping day. Amen. People come to me all the time. Hey, Brother Tony, I don't understand why this is happening. I'm not saying in every case, but there are trials and tribulations that we go through in life. But sometimes we can do a whole lot better and we can have a lot more blessings if we will just be obedient. You're going to look here in, this, in, the, in the, this truth this morning as we go to the book of 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 22. It's nothing any more frustrating sometimes as a pastor. Amen? When I preach the Word of God and preach it over the last 23 years, and I look out and I say, you know what? And I'm going to just tell you how honest, I'm, I'm, I'm very bitterly honest sometimes and brutally honest. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to preach the truth to you whether you like it or not. But I want to say I preach things over the last 23 years and I look out and I say, you know what? Some people are just idiots. Amen? 
And they said, Brother Tony, you don't even have to look over the church to see that. You can look out over our world today. If you really start questioning whether people or don't think right, just look at Facebook every once in a while, amen? Folks, we're living in a world that is just mad at everything, amen? I mean, road rage. Uh, let me tell you something. The further I can get away from Little Rock and I-30, the better. But we're going to look at something here in chapter 22, and I give Brother Bubba a long list of scriptures this morning. I told him, I said, it'll go pretty fast. And I'm not going to keep you long, but I do want to, I've entitled this message, Staying, Standing Alone for the Truth. Folks, 1 Kings chapter 22, I'm going to read verse 1 through 4 and also verse 14. You know, no one actually stands alone when they stand for the truth. Y'all understand that? Because God and the truth always make a majority. Folks, we have an unchanging message in a changing world. You, we're going to look at several characters this morning, and one of those characters is Jehoshaphat. Now, I don't know why they had names like this in the Bible, but I would get tired of telling Jehoshaphat. You know, I started thinking about, I wonder what my Old Testament name would be, Brother Chris. Tahonaphat. I don't know. You know, they had some weird names. They just didn't have simple names like Tony or, or Billy or Henry or, amen, or Georgia. But they had weird names. And so I, I, my mind wonders sometimes when I'm studying the Word of God. Amen? And, and I'm thinking about this Jehoshaphat. Folks, understand, he wanted the stamp of approval of God on what he's about to do here. Folks, we have to understand that we again have an unchanging message in a changing world. I understand that. I know that. But you'll see that Jehoshaphat endeavored to do the right thing, and yet he failed miserably because he could not face the truth. Now, after Jehoshaphat and wicked King Ahab made plans, then Jehoshaphat turned to the Lord to try to get him to rubber stamp their plans. Say, but Tony, I, I, how dare Jehoshaphat? I dare Ahab. But folks, I want you to understand, there was a man of God that came up in this scripture. His name is Micaiah. Folks, Micaiah, or Micaiah, folks, he stood for the truth. And you're going to notice here in this scripture that there were 400 other preachers, amen, that did not, they wanted, they gave the answer that, the, that these kings wanted to hear. Y'all get this, but there was one man, there was one man. His name was Micaiah. And folks, he told the truth. He preached the truth. And let me tell you something. Wicked King Ahab over Israel and Jehoshaphat over Judah, they did not want to hear the truth, but Micaiah preached them the truth. And understand, the majority was wrong and the minority was right. Folks, that's the way it is in our society today many times. How many of you remember the 12 spies that went into the, amen, the land flowing with milk and honey? They sent those 12 spies in. Only two came out saying, hey, we can take the land. Y'all remember? Joshua and Caleb. Way to go, Caleb. Joshua and Caleb come back and said, you know what? We can take the land. The question is, as many of the rulers said, oh, we can't go in there. They've got grapes as big as basketballs. They're giants in the land. We can't take that. But guess what? Joshua and Caleb came back. back. They were in the minority, and they said, we can take it because God said we could take it. God promised it to, to us, and folks, we can do it. Folks, that is the way of truth today. When I preach the word of truth, when I preach the word of God, understand the majority of people today, even in our churches, say we don't want to hear the truth many times. And folks, I've had them come out by me and say, you know what, I know what the word of God says. I know that it's the truth, but I'm not going to live it, and I'm going to choose to disobey God. Folks, you're on dangerous ground. We're on dangerous ground. 
you'll see here in this scripture, here in this verse, let's look at chapter 22, verse 1 through 4. Verse 1 says, And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. Verse 2 says, And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. And the king of Israel, which is Ahab, said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth and Gilead is ours, and we be still, and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Wilt thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. Then you can turn over to verse 14, turn over the page. I'm not, I don't have time to read this whole chapter, but let me tell you something. This is such a wonderful truth, amen? Look at verse 14. And Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Folks, I'm speaking the truth of God's Word. When I get up here and preach God's Word, and it's coming from the Word of God, and we know that it's truth, we need to be obedient to the Word of God. I know it's not popular, but folks, I didn't come here to impress you. I come here to tell you what the truth of God's Word is. Why do you want to do that, Brother Tony? So your life will be pleasing to God, the one that created us. Here's the very first point that I want to share with you. It is better to be divided by truth than united in error. Y'all getting that? 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 7 through verse 14. Look at verse 7. We're going to read seven verses here. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? Verse 8 says, And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Amen. Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. But look, look what he said here. Look what Jehoshaphat said. But I hate him. Whew, y'all getting, getting this? Let me tell you something. It's not easy sometimes preaching the truth of God's word. Amen. How many of you ever had anybody dislike you for telling them the truth? Amen? I, how many of you, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the Word of God, but I'm also talking about other things in life. How many of you have good friends that you've ever told them the truth and they didn't like you for it? Let me tell you something. This is the way, now call me weird, but if, but if I'm your friend, I'm going to tell you the truth. And guess what else? I'm going to go a little bit farther. Even if maybe I'm not your friend, I want to be your friend, I'm going to still tell you the truth. If I get up here, amen, now this is, I know this is unorthodox, but I've never been right. Okay? Now if I get up here and my pants are unzipped, you better tell me that's a true friend. Somebody just let you go around with your pants. They're not a friend. If something happens in your life, amen, and you're doing something wrong in your life, true friends will tell you the truth. So, but Tony, I'm not going to really tell them the truth because they'll get mad at me. Folks, what am I talking about this morning? Amen. People come to me all the time. Brother Tony, my friend is doing such and such and such and such. I just need, do I need to go talk? I don't want to go talk to them about it. Let me tell you something. You need to tell them the truth. And use the word of God to back you up. Amen? Say, but, uh, you know, because sometimes people think that they're telling you the truth, and it ain't. Amen? You know, I, I had a guy tell me one time, I was, I was trying to marriage counsel him, and I was using the word of God. On him, Brother Chris, I was using the, the, the word, the all truth, all 66 books. And he came to me and he said, well, Brother Tony, I really don't need any more counseling because I've got a friend of mine 
that is counseling me from work. I said, cool. I mean, what, what kind of, I mean, does he have any experience? I mean, well, he's been divorced four times. He's on his fourth wife. And so he's been get. Lord, help. That's one of those moments that I just want to unsurrender to preach. And I just want to slap them. Amen? Listen to me. The word of God is all truth. That is what we listen to. That is what we go by. And let me tell you something. There is always someone in the church and there's someone in your life that does not want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear what the word of God says because they're not doing the truth. They're not being obedient. And I can preach this, and I've preached this for years, and people, you know what, they're going to get mad at the message, and you may be here this morning, you may get mad at this message, but you know what, I have preached it, you've heard it, now it's up to you. Amen? I can't live your life. The pastor, your friends, your family cannot live your individual life. You have to do that. But you'll see here, it's better to be divided by truth than united in error. It says, but I hate him. It doesn't matter if he's still preaching me the truth is what he's saying here. But what matters here? Oh, man, I hate him. You know why I hate him? Because he's telling me the truth. Amen. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, let not the king say so. Verse 9. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hasten hither, Micaiah, the son of Imlah. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before him. And Zedekiah, the son of Kaneah, made him horns of iron and said, Thus saith the Lord... With these shalt thou push the Assyrians unto the prophets prophesied so saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. Verse 13 says, And the messenger that was going to call Micaiah spake unto him saying, Behold now the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. You see here, there's 400 preachers that's saying, hey, you're good. But there's one that's speaking the truth. Folks, we have a lot of voices clamoring to us in this day and age, amen? Folks, we got, I'm just going to tell you right now, We got folks up there in the White House, they don't even know who's pitching and who's catching. One minute, this is good, this is a good, this is the way you're supposed to do it. And I don't have to say what I'm talking about. This is the way you do it. And in the next phrase, oh, this is the way you do it. This is the way, you know what? I've got enough sense to figure out what's good for my life. It's called freedom. Amen? Well, that's not even my message. That was for free. But you'll see here, folks, we should have unity, but not at the expense of truth. Y'all getting this? Folks, we as a church, we need to have unity. Are we unified? Amen? Let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm going to get on this. I know folks are going to take vacation. This is summer. But I hate the word summer slump for a church. Amen? I don't lie. I'm not in a slump. Last time I looked, amen, I'm not in a slump. I'm going to continue to serve the Lord. For some reason, amen, I'm going to preach this a little bit. This is not even in my notes. But sometimes we want to take a break during the summer months. Folks, I don't see it anywhere in the Word of God where we take a break from God. You know what? I'm going to take a vacation and I'm going to miss a Sunday. Let me tell you something. I'm going to find somewhere to go to church. Amen? Amen? Folks, oh, but Tony, you're just meddling. I'm not going to take a break from church, and I don't expect the 
the, the church that I pastor to take a break. Boy, it sure is quiet in here. Folks, it's the truth. I don't ever see taking a break from worshiping. I don't ever see in the Word of God taking a break. Folks, we cannot take breaks on God or we will never be unified. Let me tell you something else that we won't be unified and we'll never be blessed as long as we're doing. Unconfessed sin and sin going unchecked in the Lord's local New Testament church. Amen. Folks, <laughs> boy, I could preach on that for a while. How many of you believe that adultery is scriptural? Ooh, it sure is quiet in here now. I've been here long enough to figure out what's going on. Amen? Fornication, sexual sin, is against the word of God. That we have to stand up for the truth. And I'm going to stand up for the truth if no one else stands with me because i got God on my side. Y'all getting this? Oh, Brother Tony, you're meddling, folks. I may be meddling, but it's the truth. Amen? Folks, we have to look at the Word of God. You want to be obedient? You want to be blessed? You want to be in a church that's going to be blessed? Folks, we need to preach not only the truth, but we need to believe it with our lives. Ephesians 4, 3 says, Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Psalm 133 and verse 1, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Amos 3.3, 3, Can two walk together except they be agreed? 2 Corinthians 6.14, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? Y'all getting this? Jesus Christ our Lord is the great unifier. But you'll notice something else about Jesus Christ our Lord. He is also the most divisive force the world has ever known. No one has caused more division than Jesus. Amen. Because of the truth. Folks, it'll, it'll call them out. If you ever want to look at the truth, will call them out. Hey, Brother Tony, I, you just made me mad. Well, y'all need to look at Scripture. Folks, you know what? I'm not going to go by what, what's in. <laughs> well, Brother Tony, you just need to be more understanding. The world's not like it used to be. You know why? Because we're not listening to truth. We're not being obedient to truth. I don't care what people, folks, I'm going to preach the truth. And people say, but Tony, that's just not the right thing to do. Folks, that's according to you. The right thing is the Word of God. Amen? Here's something else. Not everyone can handle the truth. Sometimes, look at Matthew 10, verse 34 through verse 36. Jesus said, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Verse 35 says, For I am come to set a man at variance against his father. And I'm going to explain this scripture. At variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Verse 36, And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Folks, I want you to understand something. Jesus Christ, again, has been very divisive because of people believing and not believing the truth of God's word and understand what this scripture is saying. Did you know what? Families sometimes will be divided because some family will want the truth and some will not want the truth. I've had people come out by me in some of the largest congregations that I've pastored. And they said, but Tony, how in the world does this church grow and how many people that's come and you preaching like you preach? Amen? Let me tell you something. When the truth of God's word is proclaimed and you live it in your life and you see the blessings of God in your life, folks, it is contagious. I had them come out by me and say, Brother Tony, I don't believe that. I know it's in the Bible, but I don't believe it. 
Let me tell you what's really concerning with that statement. It's people that's been in the Lord's church for 40 years that's teaching in your church. They come out and they say, Brother Tony, I know that's the Bible and I know it's the truth, but I ain't going to do it. I'm sitting there as a pastor and I'm like, and you're teaching in our church? Amen? I know this, this sermon might hit some of you personal. Don't take it personal. Take it with spirituality. Take it as being mature Christian. Let me tell you something. Not everything that I do in my life is right. Amen? I know that. I make mistakes. Can you imagine that, Celeste? I make mistakes. If you don't believe that, guess what? Go ask my wife. She will tell you that I make mistakes in my life. But I'm going to tell you something. If I make a mistake and I know I'm wrong, I will be the first to admit it. I will come before you and I'll say, hey, you know what? I was wrong about that. Let me tell you something. One thing that I can tell you for sure is if it's coming from the Word of God, it's going to be true. You're the one that needs to, to fix what I call here. This is Tonyology. You need, to you need to fix your stinking thinking and get your life right with God. That's that simple. Amen? Now, I've been here long enough again, not, not that I have a time frame on it, but folks, I, I'm going to preach the truth. Now, when you look here, here's number two. It is better to speak the truth that hurts than heals than to speak falsehood that comforts than kills. Amen? 1 Kings 22 and verse 8, look at that. Y'all still there? Believe it or not, if you'll hurry up and listen, I'll be done. i got about 20 minutes. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imlah, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Here he goes again, but I hate him. Amen. <laughs> For he doth not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Folks, understand, 400 preachers preached a lie. Only Micaiah preached the truth. Let me tell you something. I will tell you this. I've told some of my men and some of you individuals. Let me tell you, I've preached the truth. And don't look at me, oh, well, Tony, you're going to preach the truth. You're dogmatic. You're this, this, and this. But I have preached the truth, and I have suffered, and my family has suffered because I preached the truth, and I did not back up from it. I'm going to give you an example. Many of you have heard this. I've told some of you, many of you. Folks, you know what? I've had for sale signs put in my yard. I've had threatening letters that I had to turn over to the FBI. You know why? Preach the truth, and boy, it treaded on some toes. Amen? So you know what they attack? They attack the mouthpiece. You know what? They think they bothered me. <laughs> What really bothered me is when they sent their kids with messages to school to confront my children. You can mess with me all day. That means say amen. You can mess with me all day. I'm pretty tough. But when you start messing with my family and you start messing with my kids, amen, Lord, uncall me to preach just for a little bit. Y'all getting me? I even told a guy, he come up to me after he cussed me. And the last, hey, I'm just going to tell you, back in the day, I'm just going to tell you, <laughs> I've had them get nose to nose with me and cuss me for standing for the truth. In an airport, and my wife told me very delicately, she said, I know, she knew me when I wasn't a preacher. And she told me, she said, I know that you are a called preacher. And I know that you are saved. Because I know 25 years ago, I'm not telling you to brag. I'm just telling you. Folks, you're going to suffer for telling the truth. Amen? Folks, I told that one guy, I said, let me tell you something. The Bible says to lay hands on no man suddenly. 
Amen. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. This man here, 400 preachers preached it. 400 preachers preached it. Only one could have the courage to speak the truth. Ahab hated Micaiah for telling the truth that could have saved his life. Why? Because, folks, he was a wicked king. He disobeyed God. And folks, as a child of God, folks, we need to support the man of God. Amen? Rough truth is better than polished falsehood. Ecclesiastes 7, 5. Listen to this. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. Proverbs 27 Verse 5 and 6, I'm going through these quick. Told you to go quick, Bubba. Open rebuke is better than secret love. Verse 6 says, Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Folks, it is not friendship and it is not love if we don't proclaim the whole counsel of God. We are to preach the truth no matter what. Here's number three. It is better to be hated for telling the truth than to be loved for telling a lie. Amen? 1 Kings 22, 8. Here he goes again. But I hate him. Amen? How many of y'all, I've heard church members say that. Well, Brother Tony, I know I'm supposed to love my brothers and sisters in Christ, but I tell you what, that one gets on my nerves. Amen? I'm going to tell you this, and you're going to hear it time and time again. I love all of you. But some of you is easier to love than others. Amen? Say, Brother Tony, am I one of those that's hard to love? Well, come to me. I'll tell you the truth. Paul told the Galatians in Galatians 4.16, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Jesus said this in John 7, 7. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth. Why? Because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Folks, we are not called to be loved by everybody, but to speak the word of God. Folks, I, well, Tony, I just don't like the way you preach. Come on up here, boy. Sit down right there. They're not listening to me, so get up here. I'll let you listen to me. Come on. There you go. Here comes somebody. Somebody going to get you. My question to you is, are you being obedient? Huh? All right. I always like them falling outfits there. Here's number four. It is better to stand alone with the truth than to be wrong with the multitude. Amen? 400 who were wrong to one who was right. Folks, there are those who want to homogenize society and eradicate conviction. The religion today that we're looking at today in our world is this. And you've heard me preach this, and I'm almost done. We say, well, Brother Tony, I, I'll go, I want religion. No, we don't need religion. We need Jesus. Amen. That's the last thing in our world. But here's the religion today. It says it's a get-alongism. Man, we just got to get along. Folks, I'm going to let you in on something. If you're not standing up for the truth and the Word of God, then me and you probably not going to get along. Amen. Or well, Brother Tony, I, I just, I, I just got to do what's right for me and my family. What you need to do is what the Word of God says. Amen? I cannot say it enough. But, you know, we have to learn by repetition. Amen? If you take a stand today, you'll be labeled a bigot or a fundamentalist. Folks, there comes a time in every Christian life when you have to stand alone. Noah preached, listen to this, for 120 years. Seven of his family members and himself were the only converts. And his family went into the ark as a minority, but you know what? They came out the majority. Here's my last point. 
And as I close, folks, it is better to be ultimately to ultimately succeed with the truth than to temporarily succeed with a lie. The 400 were praised, and the one Micaiah was put in prison. Read the scripture. He was put in prison for telling the truth. Folks, God's era, guess what? The king of Israel was Ahab. Ahab, Jehoshaphat dressed up as the king. And guess what? You read this scripture. Ahab was trying to hide. You know what? He got an era, bled to death. That evening, that very evening, he died in scripture. God's era found Ahab and God's crown found Micaiah. Y'all remember that song, Stand Up for Jesus? Stand up for Jesus. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead. Till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Micaiah was this. He was hated for his warning. He was despised for his truthfulness. He was persecuted for his courage. He was imprisoned for his faithfulness. He was afflicted for displeasing the wicked king Ahab. But his motto and our motto today, now listen to this, our motto today should be in 1 Kings twenty-two fourteen, As the Lord liveth, what the Lord saith unto me, that will I speak. Folks, how many of us are speaking the truth and how many of us are living a lie? Amen? Folks, you know, I've always been that type of person, Brother Henry. <laughs> I just can't lie. If I lie about something, and I'm not going to say I haven't lied, but if, I, if I've lied about something, I can't sleep. If I have an ought against you, what is that, Brother Tony? That's unbiblical. If I have a beef with you, if we have a problem between you and I, guess what? You won't have to worry about it because I'll come to you. Amen? We'll sit down and look eyeball to eyeball. Y'all listen to this very closely. We'll sit down eyeball to eyeball, and we'll open the Word of God. It's not going to be my opinion against your opinion. It's going to be the truth of God's Word against whatever you bring. You better bring your Bible with you. Amen? Some people say, I had a lady tell me one time she had a problem with another lady in the youth group. Boy, there was bickering and fighting and fussing between some of our sponsors, and she come to me, Brother Chris, and she said, you know, I just got a, I got a problem with this lady. I said, well, number one, what's the Word of God say in Matthew? You take that. If you have an aunt with a brother or sister, you go to them one-on-one. -on -one. Have you done that yet? Here's what the Word of God says. She said, I knew you was going to put the Bible into this. <laughs> Preacher, lay it aside. <laughs> Lord! And y'all say, well, how do you keep saying only through God's grace and God's goodness. He puts certain people over the pastor of a church. He knows we can handle not only sinfulness, because we got sinfulness in every church you go to, but you got to get it right. And also stupidity. Share the word. Well, Tony, I just share the word of God with them. Do it in a loving manner. Amen. Well, you know, here's the word of God. You either do it or you're wrong. Amen. Everybody stand.